All right, guys, welcome back to the vlog. So now that we have a set of aftermarket seats for the FL5, we got to figure out how to put it in. Uh, so I checked out a lot of information on the internet and there's really not a whole lot of information. There's a lot of misinformation of how to just get rid of the airbag sensor and the airbag lights, but that's really not what I want to do. I want to do like an OEM plus setup where you want the aftermarket seat, but you want all the airbags to function properly. So this week we're going to figure out how to get that to work properly. Let's go. All right, so since we went with Bridge Japan E-Derbs, you will need a set of seat rails to install or to mount them to the, uh, the FL5. So naturally I went with Bridge Japan seat rails because I know they just fit properly. I've done them before in my GTR, so we're gonna go with Bridge Japan seat rails. So Bridge Japan seat rails for the FL5, they offer two rails. Uh, one, which is like considered their low max, so this, uh, the seat position is a lot lower. I think it's about like an inch lower. And then you got your natural, normal seat rails where just the seating position is a little higher. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and box them for you guys right now and show you guys the difference. Okay, I'm just gonna grab you guys here. All right, so these are the uh, part numbers or the code or part list. It's all here. And uh, so the one that is normal seating position will say in the model FL1 and FL5. And then the one that is considerably lower is the, it says FL5 only. So here's another shot of them side by side. There's a difference there. So that one inch could be a, could be a noticeable difference. Um, if you're, depends on the seating position that you like. So for all you technical guys, I'm gonna give you a measurement here. So that's roughly two inches. And the FL5 seat rail is roughly one inch. So you give yourself about an inch taller in height uh, with the standard seat. So before we dive into the installation, I wanna to explain to you guys how the SRS system works on the Honda Civic. This way, so we have a better understanding of where and why we need these sensors and where to position them all. So first up is the driver's side here. The only sensor that we have to deal with is the seat position sensor. This seat position sensor pretty much tells the Civic or the SRS system how close the driver is to the airbag on the steering wheel. If the driver is too close or too short, uh, I believe the airbag deployment is basically cut in half or doesn't deploy at all. It's a, the amount of, I guess, the explosion, so it doesn't hurt the actual driver. Uh, so just the position, this sensor here is what we have to deal with. On the passenger side, it's a little more complicated. It's a load-bearing uh, sensor, so it measures in real time. And there's two sensors, one here and one here. And it's all connected to the actual rail itself. So what the Honda system does is it measures in real time. It knows when somebody's on it or not on, or depends on the weight or how big the, or how heavy the occupant is. It's a little more complicated system than let's say, uh, for example, uh, Nissan. The Nissan uses a bladder system where it's pretty much like a trigger. It's, if there's a certain amount of weight that meets the requirements, it turns the airbag on. And if it doesn't, it just turns off. So it's a lot simpler, not as your Honda here. So that's why it's gonna be a little harder to install. Um, again, I didn't wanna do just to like take off the sensor, wrap it up, and then just put it on just to get rid of the light. Because if you get in an accident, the airbag just won't go on and that's what we don't want. We want it OEM plus, everything has to be functional. So now we're moving on to the assembly of the new BRID brackets onto the seats. But before we can do that, we gotta remove all the weight sensors and the seat position sensors on the factory frames here. Uh, so we went ahead and did that already. So what you'll need to do is, it'll be a 12 mil and a 14 mil for the sensor itself. And that's wedged in between here. And on the driver's side, you'll need to take off the seat position sensor and the plate where it detects. Uh, so far, what we did, we, we just grinded it off so that we have this whole plate here. Uh, you might not have to do that, but that's what we're gonna do right now. Until, for until then, we'll see what else we can do to position it on the new sensor. 
the new uh, rail here. We gotta treat it so that they don't rust, right, Victor? Yeah, matches, are, it'll match the factory finish on this. And it looks good too. Yeah. But mainly it's because it'll rust if you just, if you don't paint it and treat it. The front ones are actually are perfect, but the back ones are off just by a little bit. So we're gonna be mounting, this is the rear load center, and they almost line up, so we just gotta make this front hole a little bit bigger. And this is the passenger side. Correct, yeah. And what size hardware did we use for these ones? These are M8 by 25 millimeters. Nice and perfect. Okay, so let's, let's just put a mock up. Now we're gonna move this forward. And now we're gonna do the front one. And the front one, which is nice, it's like almost like Brid new. We we're gonna put these on here because they basically these holes are in a right perfect spot for the load cell. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect. In order to maintain the factory mounting locations on the bridge seat, what we've decided to do is get some square tubing, inch and a half by inch and a half, heavy, heavy wall. And then for the passenger side to offset the load sensor, we basically got some inch and a half by inch and a half heavy wall, and then we basically put in a piece of flat steel welded in place. And so when we put this down and then this down, this will be level. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark, we're gonna drill the holes in this piece of inch and a half by inch by square steel, square tubing here, to basically, so it sits. So these pieces here will sit basically in here, front, will sit in here, and then we're gonna drill the holes here, and those will basically mount to the seat like that. that. Used for the seat, right? This hole and this hole here, right? That should be 10 and a quarter, and 10, 10 and a quarter. quarter. Okay, so that's the two holes. And I believe we're 16 inches. Yeah, 16 inches. So these are the two outside holes we're gonna use. So now we gotta drill basically the mounting holes. So we're gonna mount this piece to this piece. This piece will mark these two holes here afterwards. We're gonna mount the two top holes and these will be mounted as well. So to explain again, the load set or the bracket itself is gonna use this to anchor to the bracket that we just made. And then we're gonna use the supplied screws from Brid to mount this bracket to the seat, right? Correct. They like hardened steel, eh? Is nice this way if some if, if if for some reason you ever get into an accident on the track right. the seat is going to stay in place yeah you don't want to use anything thinner than this say right there because mm, you want to use anything thinner than what the factory used this is basically what the factory used if you look at the steel here and you look at the steel here it's pretty much the same okay
Okay, so now this one, we just gotta make the holes bigger because we gotta, now we gotta check. This is the one that goes here on this side, so we just gotta make the holes so that they're big enough for this. So we're gonna take this and this. Oh, a it's little much. At least it tells you the size on there too, Victor. Yeah, look at that, eh? What, what size did you uh, end up drilling to? It, sa it says right on the... Uh, three quarter inch. Three quarter inch? Yeah. Yeah, basically three, almost three quarter inch, yeah. Perfect, eh? Uh, 11 sixteenths actually. And then we're gonna do that for the back side. Right? Yeah. Just gonna drill the holes where these ones go because this has to basically we have to just make some holes in here for these ones to give it the clearance and that's it so we need to drill six holes right at yeah. three quarter inch yeah. so what we're doing is we're drilling the holes so that we can mount this bracket to this bracket. We went ahead and anchored it down. Now we just tighten everything in. Uh, what size is the Allen key right there? Uh, I believe. Well, I guess it depends on the hardware that you buy, you right? Use, yeah. So the one that we use. Six mil Allen key, mil. 12 mil wrench. And then we the fact, it these, this is the factory hardware yeah. that comes with the donor seats. So the best way to do to uh, fasten these because we're dealing with such a tight space is uh, go upside down, put the nut in with the wrench, and it should secure into place. And then just tighten it by hand all the way, and then just uh, use the wrench after to torque it down. Easier said than done, right, Victor? It's always, <laughs> especially when the camera's pointing at you. I know, you made it so easy when the camera wasn't off. I know. I mean, it was on, wasn't on, but I now know. it's on. As soon as the camera's on, it makes, makes it just puts the stress right on you. All right, so we mounted it. She looks good. So the only problem that we're running into now is how we're going to mount this to the seat. It looks easy, but is we gotta get the bolt in here and get the fastener to fasten it. So we're gonna have to figure that out. Because this is our first time doing it in a trial and error, we can't get to the Allen key inside, or can't get the Allen key to get the bolt tightened down. Without, without modifying it too old. <laughs> yeah, so. So we're gonna try it this way. Yeah, so we're gonna do, is we're gonna bolt the bar to the seat first, and then the seat bar to the rail. And I think that's gonna work. So hopefully, uh, cross your fingers, you guys. All right, so Victor did uh, remove the bolt, and yes. Success. It's, uh, so it is a sequence, so bolt this down first, and then this to the rail. So we mounted that side in, and then so we went and took off the weight sensors so that we can have access to the hole. So, so definitely it is a procedure. So you have to mount the fabricated rails to the seat and then the seat with the fabricated rails to the actual bridge rails that's the only way the easiest way that's the easiest, easiest way. way and this will make it work It's the load sensor side that's always the hardest to get in. This is the toughest one, yeah. Yeah. We should be good at it now, for we've done this three times. Yeah, I know. This is number three here for us, eh? That's what happens when we're the guinea pigs. Yeah. Hopefully someone will benefit from it. And if you benefit from it, please 
subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, you guys. Please subscribe to if our you Twitter. If you find anything, any of this information or any of this is useful, hit that subscribe button right down below. There we go. Once uh, Victor buttons that down, we're gonna tighten up the front one. And then uh, this one is uh, complete. Oh, down. So Victor comes through again, you guys. So I'll let him explain to you guys what he did on the uh, driver's side here. So we, we bolted, <laughs> so we bolted on, the, this is the factory piece that comes on the donor seats. This is the, I guess, the little piece of metal that, and this is your magnetic pickup. And so what we did is we bolted it to the seat here. So it's basically bolted on there. And then the magnetic pickup. Because originally you planned, you wanted to weld it onto the, uh, the, the bridge frame, right? Yeah, I was going to weld it on, but then I figured we want to do a bolt on piece just in case if, if you want to take it off or use it for a different something else. But, and then we bolt, then we made this little bracket here and then we bolted this on and then we notched the bracket, drilled a hole in the bracket and then basically put our little magnetic pickup in there. Wow. So, so that's all that, bolted on. That looks nice, Victor. So basically this now will work. As soon as that gets close, it picks it up. Picks it up and deletes the airbag. So the airbag doesn't go off. And then you can move it all the way back. And it doesn't uh, and it interfere with the slider mechanism. No, nope, nothing rubs, nothing touches. It's all set up. So we go back and forth. As soon as it gets close. So for this setup, we had to use the taller bridge uh, rail, right? Because the lower one doesn't allow this to clear, right? Correct. So just, to, yeah. be on the, yeah, just to be on the safe side? Yeah, we, you have to use the taller one. Unless you, you could, you could probably cut a little bit more of the bracket off, but uh, we just, that's basically set up that way. Yeah. And on this one here, because it's got the, on the driver's side, there's those washers get put in here. So you can actually do this on this side. I guess we'll, we'll see it once we bolt the seat to it right now. Yeah. Right? Okay, let's do that. Johnny? Nice, eh? Alright. <laughs> Just like Japan. <laughs> Woo! Just like Japan. Okay. This is exciting, you guys. Now we're gonna get this put in. If we have worked out with these spaces, with that extra girth that we have here. Yeah, you gotta put it into this. You gotta put it into this. Yeah, technically the spacer. I was wondering what they were for, and Victor figured it out. It's for the uh, the seatbelt bracket, so that it's raised evenly with the uh, the bracket itself. That's what it's originally for. But it worked out because that extra lift on this side that we have for the breath, for the sensor, it works out perfectly. Okay, let's uh, let's so, install this. It's like we planned this. <laughs> So with this one, we're going to use the supplied hardware from uh, Brit Japan. Quite easy, right? How come it's so... Uh, you can okay. open the wrong hole. Probably this one. <laughs> it's, this one is the wrong hole with it. Is it? Yeah. Or is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which hole did you put in? Second. They're both second. second. Okay, maybe it's when we slide, when we slid it. We didn't slide it now. Yeah, it's got to Okay. Maybe you did have in the right hole. Of course. <laughs> of course. Putting in the hole can't be wrong, maybe, sir. I've been married can't, for a while. Can't <laughs> Let 
Victor torque it down and then we'll give it a slide to see if it uh, hits anything. I think we're good. I think we're good, yeah? All right. The moment of truth. So the whole purpose is so that we can slide without binding up or ever touching anything. You want to do it? Go ahead. I think somebody's, I think you got it. It's got to be bolted in the car. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a pain. How many guys that take to lift a seat or move a seat? Oh, there you go. There you go. Ta da. Go back forward. There we go. Smooth. It works. So, uh, I guess everything is done for the fabrication and installing all the sensors, the factory sensors and the seat position sensor. So uh, we'll, we're gonna cut it right now. We're gonna go do a part two of uh, throwing it into the FL5, you guys. So stay tuned for next week and uh, we'll get it all cal calibrated and uh, hopefully everything works. Well, cause we got it from the donor vehicle. So we don't know if the sensors work or not. So hopefully it does, guys. See you guys next week. Great. <laughs> <laughs>